This deck is a cry for help, because this... And this... This is round two, by the way. Should not be possible. This deck showcase video is going to be a little different from the others. Oh, we're still going to talk about the deck and how it functions, but at the end of the video, we'll talk about why the mechanics displayed here are actually broken, what cards make them broken, and strategies for dealing with the new Shenha Hat Guide decks. The first point to address are the characters' roles in the deck. Nahida's role in the deck is a pretty simple one. Use your skill to apply your Seeds of Skond on the opponent. This deck is only concerned with the piercing damage that Nahida's Seeds of Skond produce when an elemental reaction is triggered, since it ignores all defenses and can be activated even with swirl reactions. In some rare cases, the deck may also opt for using Nahida's Burst to increase elemental reaction damage, but usually the deck prefers to sacrifice Nahida's energy for Hat Guy's or Shenha's Burst. However, even Shenha's Burst isn't entirely necessary due to Nahida's Seeds of Skanda applying the additional point of damage that the Burst would have been there for. Because of this, Shenha's main use is to use her skill to apply Cryo and increase Cryo damage, primarily Cryo Swirl damage. This fact alone can make this deck faster than other Shenha Hat Guy Swirl decks, since there's no need to even get out bursts or play around send off. And nothing so far has been anything new, however. Nahida Shenha Swirl has been a niche deck for a while, but with the addition of Hat Guy, and especially his broken ability to attack standby characters directly with his normal attacks after performing his skill, this deck fully enters a broken zone by consistently triggering reactions and AoE damage. Hack Guy's burst further breaks things by offering an insanely high damaging single target attack that often starts the deck's winning combo with the new arcane card, Fresh Wind of Freedom. The previous effect of Mondstadt's Resonance card, Wind and Freedom, has now been reworked into the new Fresh Wind of Freedom card at zero cost. Being an arcane card, this card is now innately in the starting hand, and allows for this deck to snowball off of killing one opposing character into wiping the entire opposing team in a single round. Now, ideally, this deck starts with Nahida to begin applying Seeds of Skanda onto the opponent. Whether or not to use her 5-cost skill to apply this effect to all opposing character cards at once, or opt for the cheaper 3-cost single-target skill depends on two factors. Most importantly, the dice rolls, and secondly, the cards in the starting hand. If the starting hand includes both Liu Su and Kaux's arts, it may be best to opt for the 3-cost skill from Nahida, and then swap to Shenha and use her skill. This will allow for an instant round 2 burst from Shenha. Else, if Leave It To Me is also in hand, then you can immediately swap to Hat Guy, use his skill to apply Cryo and a few points of damage to the opposing team, while setting up to use Kaux's arts to burst down any character they swap to, potentially killing one of the two opposing characters by the end of round two. The alternative opening using Nahida's 5-cost skill will typically want either Changing Shifts or Vonorana in hand. The former, if the dice allow, is for free-swapping the Shenha to use the three remaining dice. Else, Vonorana can collect the remaining dice for the next round. This opening is a little slower, but will net greater long-term damage than the other opening. The other cards in the deck exist to facilitate any opening, whether it be an aggressive one, or one that opts for a more reverse sweep style. Chang the Ninth can be activated easily with the constant swirls, and Heavy Strike gives Hat Guy's normal attacks even more damage to set up for Fresh Wind of Freedom sweep combos. Toss Up is used over Favonius Library or Jade Chamber due to how fast the deck is and needing proper dice on the first round. Since the deck is primarily focused on Hat Guy alone, it opts for I Haven't Lost Yet instead of consistent healing, but the few healing food items should generally be reserved for Hat Guy since he is the primary damage source. With that being said, 
let's get into some matches and see just why this deck's mechanics are so broken. Full disclosure, some of the matches shown here actually use an older version of this deck. However, even with the suboptimal cards, the deck still did its job, and the cards in question weren't used. And since these matches were more exciting, I kept them in. But without further ado, the matches. Oh, look at that. Another Shenha swirl. Okay. This could be interesting. Opponent starts first, so they will probably start with Shenha. They can theoretically push us around, so having this is going to be nice. Um, Liu Su is going to be nice. Mm, I might get rid of this, honestly, just to try to get some dice rigging here. There we go. I've been waiting we know Shenha's coming out first. Yeah, don't knock that Dendro over. Oh lord, that is not exactly the best. Again, I'm going to keep a little bit of that. Okay. We've got enough that we're going to have to, to split it here. Manifest. Elemental skill. Okay. Um... Hmm. God, I really would like to just get all of it out, because they are going to be just as fast as us here, if anything. Um, but it seems a bit silly to do so, so... I'm just going to do that. Committed to memory. Let's see what they do. Normal attack, so they are going to go for the burst here. Come next turn... That is fine, albeit a tad bit annoying. We too will be able to get the burst off but just a bit later than them. They've got free swap, we have quick swap. So. Manifest! This is going to be quite the experience here. We also have energy. Hmm. I have an idea here. If they try to swap, um, I'm not going to keep Shenha. We're going to try to go for just a I murder you burst with very bad dice rolls. Because we can quick swap to him. They Cryo are going to do that. It. That's fine. Um, we really need to get Animo, though. Because we need to use quite a few things. We we legitimately need Animo. Works. Let's get rid of this cryo, please. Okay, that's, yeah, that's what we're gonna need. We are gonna quick are swap sure on over. We'll Fine. have... Let's get this over with. Enough to do quite a bit of damage there. Ooh, they too have quick swap. So they're going to try to push us off of him, I guess, then? Or are they going to go to him? If they go to him, we kill. Oh, yeah. The wind rises. Okay. I'm gonna burst. Yeah, you're dead. And I'm gonna ensure that I end my round first, so. Cry louder! Leaves them Everything. just oh, with Sucrose. Yep, instant win. Wow. Okay, looks like we are up against Vaporize. Interesting combo with them two. We'll see how that works out here. It might be useful for us with Bloom, but we're not really going to be able to make much of an advantage off of it. Uh, this isn't half bad. We want to save this for when somebody dies. Granted, it's very likely that people are going to die in end phase, so maybe this isn't going to be as useful. That'll be better for when we start off all of our broken combos. Pretty much just want to start getting uh, piercing 
in play here. Uh, not exactly the best rules. I'd prefer Dendro and Cryo. How do we get the Dendro? Okay, looks like we have some enough Dendro for what we need to do here. We're not going to be able to do a whole lot after we do it, though, but my guess is they're going to probably try to Myriad anyway, so I'm not too concerned. Um, maybe chuck something like this so that I don't have to use this. This is my only form of dice rigging right now. So, yeah, I think we just go big. And then we set up for her next round. By round three, we start the kill. Are they going for bursts then? They do have Hydro Res. They're going to have quite a bit of healing. There's the Mimics. That's fine. Um, I kind of wish I had Von Arana here. I'm just going to place that for dice. Um economy here we really don't need to if i need to like do any swapping nahida dying means nothing she's done what she needs to now if anything we're just keeping her for that point of energy because we can uh, theoretically bring it over there's free swap and her thing that's fine they're probably going to try to put some amount of Hydro on themselves with Barbara's skill. Uh, we don't need any of this anymore. That really wasn't necessary. So we can free swap. And do we really care if we free swap at this point, though? I don't think we do. I don't really think it matters if we free swap at this point, because we don't have a whole lot that we can work with anyway, so... I will do as you command. Normal swap is fine. Save these for when we need to quickly get over to him, which in theory... In theory, we could do... We'd have to get rid of something, though. But in theory, we could start messing around with this. If we wanted to just take this off, we could skill, do this, sack that, quick and free swap, jump over there. Or we could get rid of the this. We just need to sit there and put stuff on them is what we really need to do. Um, so we could theoretically get rid of that as well. Though I highly doubt they're just going to stay on Barbara, so. Obey. Yeah, now they switch to Dea. Uh-huh. Do we necessarily care here? Like, we'll take a bit, and that's, that's cool and all, or whatever. Um... Or we can just let the Hydro hit him. Like, that's that's fine, too. And just normal attack. Mm, I think, if anything, we get rid of this at this point. And just normal attack. Yeah, all of this is going to hit us. Yada, yada, yada. That's fine. They're going to get Hydro on themselves or swap back to her to get rid of it. Okay, they're going to put that on her instead. Interesting. Their ending turn. We could mess around with Hydro and go for, like, a freeze. It'd be a freeze on the Barbara, but, you know, it would still get us some piercing off, too. Okay, we have this. Opponent's going to go first. Yay. Um, they could theoretically try to... Uh, I bet they're going to try to kill with the burst. They probably have energy. Um, I'm going to save one of those just in case they don't. Uh, oh, no, I got two of them and then this mess. Von Aran is a bit late. Nope, they're going to swap there. Do we go for the burst? I mean, there's no reason not to...
even if they get rid of the burst, they, they've got to see it coming, right? Even if they get rid of it, we can still move around here. So even if they do have send off, it's no big deal. Water's form is ever okay, changing. they are gonna start aiming for some stuff here. <sighs> what do you want from me? That's gonna be a heck of a lot of damage Storm on them. Fury. She is now frozen out. The piercing starts coming in. We swap the Nahida to start tanking damage for us. Wow, the, or we, we swap the Nahida to throw another big thing on him because that did a bunch of damage right there. They're gonna free swap to someone, probably Barbara, because they wanna get rid of that. There's, I would have free swapped. But honestly, I would not have, I would not have stayed there for that. Huh, okay. What are we gonna take for damage? If they have burst, we die. If they have anything to pull energy, so I'm not gonna risk losing him to that. And I'm instead just gonna move right on over here. If she dies, cool, we whip out this. If not, we hit with more piercing. Mm, would have liked another quick swap to just blast right back over there. That's a lot of cryo that I don't think I am going to need. Oh, I'm going to keep that though. Decent amount of dendro. We can always sack something again. Wolf's gravestone is going on her. Okay. That's fine. Uh huh. I think I get rid of this, honestly. I have a few ideas here. Um. Everyone hold hands. Okay. We've got that back on them. What Elemental God? skill. Probably going to go for the skill again on Nahida, and that's fine by me, honestly. I'm just gonna play that, then. Um, are we gonna be able to get this off? I mean, because if not, we could just do, like, another attack. Because if they go to for another skill, it's gonna be... Well, it's gonna be one damage plus two um, because of this, and then plus... Actually, it'll probably be two damage because... It, yeah, it'd be lethal. Um, so it's lethal on either or. How do we want to play that? We could easily swap let her die and then but I don't think we need to do that do we if we let the Shenha die because we don't have no I don't think we need to do anything at this point because we can always yeah let Nahida die save this for Shenha elemental Goodbye. skill yep that's fine <laughs> Now we could go here and potentially do some stuff. What is this gonna do? That's gonna do four and then one. That's gonna be lethal there. I think we're fine with this. Are you sure it has to be me? <sighs> fine. Let's get this over with. Yeah, I think we're fine with this. I think we're good. Ow. Ow. Even bigger ow. Okay, now it's just a matter of, can we roll correctly? We already have a bunch of cryo coming in, so I don't really want it. It's not gonna kill. I have an idea. Because if I do this, it's only gonna be five. I need this to drop where we're up too many dice. So I need this to be eleven. I will do as you command. 
And she can burst here, which she will. Or maybe even just normal attack. Or not normal attack, yeah, you burst. So there's the burst. Yeah. Uh, my curse. That's fine. Now if I do that, it'll kill with this, because I've got this here. Here comes the piercing, there goes the burst. Has everyone stopped singing? That's at one, burst comes in, we win. There you go. Louder. Where is I messed up? Okay, I got a sort of an electro charge version here. Okay, it's pretty decent. We've got some card draw. We could try to risk it for dice rigging, but I think we'll just stick with it at this point. Time to broaden the horizons Probably again. safer. They're gonna go for that. We'll get Bloom off on it. That's, I, I mean, it makes her weaker for when we have to hit her in the face with uh, Hat Guy there. Um, assuming we roll the correct dice, we do have the ability to... Hmm. We might sack that, to be honest. I'm not gonna do it just yet, but yeah, that's that's probably where that's going. Grow, grow, grow. The bloom again doesn't really matter. Um, we'd like to just get this on everyone. Yeah, the opponent realizes bloom doesn't matter here. It's not about the bloom, so they can get that out as much as they want. Uh, okay. Will you sue? I will do as you command. We'll have that out there. Miko comes out. Fair enough. Skill card comes out. Manifest. Show them. Okay, and they're going for Electro Charge. If we get Quick Swap, that would be really nice here. They're going to heal on her, because they're going to use her a lot for the healing. Ow. Okay, Pizza, we can potentially use that, and I guess just stick on her to start doing damage. If she goes down, she goes down. There's no real reason for us to be too concerned here. Um, in fact, I think we'll just commit to her, maybe. If the dice allow us, they do allow us at least that. So that's good. Um, no Vonorana, which is unfortunate. They might have send-off, honestly. If they do, that's unfortunate. But I'm not too concerned. Show them. No, they're going to get that off. Maybe even go for bursts on things. Um, why don't we just swap the Nahida? I've been waiting for you for ages. Swapping back to her. Fair enough. Uh, again, I would really, really love... I'm just going to put that on him, because at this point, why not? And put that on him, because again, why not? And just go right from there. Hold the line. Okay, they're going to do that so that there's, you know, the freeze is technically not there. But they will let us get the piercing, which is going to basically equal the same thing. That's still there. We're still going to hit the piercing. Of course, our thing ended up healing a little too early, which is unfortunate because we ended first. There is quick swap, which is nice. Uh, no, I haven't lost yet. We do get Lieben, bare minute, or not Lieben, um, Vonorana. Hmm, I don't really want to play that. I think we, yeah, I do think we just go with it. 
Especially since we didn't roll really how we wanted to, so we just get the, the piercing off of here. That uh, won't kill. But we are going to get the piercing on everyone now. Yeah, and dice rolls are being a little problematic here for us. Burst. Okay. If you want to use all of that on that, I'm alright with it. That doesn't concern me all that much. Because we still, again, we get what we, we need here. I will do as you command. Energy, unfortunately, goes to her for it. Um, I mean, I guess if we had wanted to, we could try to have done, like, a three. Like, what's the point, right? There's no real reason. I think, again, we play it slow here. We're not rolling the dice that we want. We're not getting our dice rigging, so play it slow. We don't have much reason to be concerned here. Animo stuff goes on him, sure. Switching to him. Okay. There's two on there. Ow. Well, now there's one on there, but that's still fine for us. I'm not too bothered. Okay, now we get some free swap, some quick swap. Now we might be able to start doing some stuff here. If we roll correctly, do I want to keep the Shenha one? I don't really think so. Yeah, we mostly just want to go for as much as we can here from the old hat guy. Quick swap, free swap, bust on over. Are you sure it has to be me? <sighs> Fine, let's get this over with. Now the piercing starts laying in, they start realizing this is going down. We're in a position where we can do quite a bit here. Surprised they didn't go off in view of that. Interesting. The wind Elemental rises. skill. Okay. Because we can do some nice kills here. There we go on that. Must learn from my mistakes. And then here we go here. And now it's just burst what a sweep. Dreadful ending. So unless they can get a lot of energy, I just burst them down. Or have some means of even Lotus Chris wouldn't save them. Your head. Yep, there we go. Reverse sweep version. Okay, looks like we've got ourselves an uh, interesting deck. Gonna go for energy here. The Zhang Li is going to be there to try to probably burst us down a bit. Um, that could be pretty annoying to deal with. We're going to have to move pretty fast here. We're going to need the dice that we, we really need and the energy that we really need. So Liu Su is going to be important. That might be useful too. I think we'll be able to get the opening I've dice that we want. For you for ages. Interesting. He's coming out first. Maybe they have Liu Su for uh, the Raiden. That would be my guess. We're going to try to get better dice rolls here. Yeah, a little better. Uh, do we want to try toss-upping it, or do we want to try this? Uh, I feel like toss-up is probably the better choice. I think we really want Nahida to get her full thing out and not mess around with that. Okay. <clears throat> Give me at least one more. That'll work. We'll have to use some other stuff and we actually don't really have what we need to swap over so I don't know why I did that um, this is just going to be what we have to do then no Liu Su we're going to have to be a little careful with the energy here if we had free swap I would have just used this and, and done both 
Okay, interesting. Are they... They, he's do as you building command. towards the burst. But if they don't they don't hurry up, they're gonna be a, a round behind there. Yeah, they're desperately building towards his burst to stall out him. Obey. But we can just back and forth it. We don't really need to worry that much. They might have Liu Su to go to her. Star sign, so yeah, they're gonna go for the burst. I mean it's four geo damage that they're gonna be able to do next round if they intend to. Are they gonna save it for him? Who knows? We now get Liu Su, just a teensy bit late, but still, if we get quick swap, it can be helpful. Okay, how do we wanna play this? Um, I don't know if we want to go to him. I'm just gonna kinda keep a little bit of everything to see what they do and respond accordingly. We can theoretically go for big hee hee or small hee hee hit. Kinda just depends. Depends on if they swap. And again, they might just try to burst her down. I mean, if that's the case, okay, she's kinda done most of her role already. They I will. will have order. That's not going to affect us in the slightest, to be entirely honest. Um, how do we want to play this? Do we want to go her or him? I feel like I want to go into in the him here. Did they use one of my animo dice for that and I didn't realize it? That's really annoying. Okay. A normal attack. Fascinating. So they are going to go for some sort of like heal on there. Um, and we're still going to get a bit of damage on everyone. The sure, rests. they can heal up all they want. That, to me, is not going to be a big deal. They end round. We can just start doing more damage. And now, we're prepared to burst down pretty much anyone here. So, unless they've got a lot of energy in that hand, they're going to be in a bit of a pickle. We've got some food here if we need to heal her. So, I'll see what they do. Surprising that they haven't brought out the Raiden to get the energy. I feel like that would have been the faster choice. Um, I'm going to skip out on that and maybe... Yeah. Well, we've got the Dendro too, I guess. But Toss-Up is here for us. So, we can work with that. So, where are they going? If they move to Raiden, we insta-kill. You're going to try to... Gather. Geo summon damage. I mean, I guess that's cool. Um, you, you really wanted the shield, I guess. Uh, I'm not too concerned about that. Maybe we just swap the Nahida at this point. Again, we could just burst down and then start going ham. Um, but I don't know what effect that would have in the long run. I, I think Hida might just be the smartest choice here. I've been waiting for you for ages. We can just heal him up if we need to. They've got three dice. What are they going to do? Swap? We swap back and kill. They're doing something. Normal attack. Okay. They're going for bursts. I'm, again, not phased by this. Committed to memory. Now that's on everyone. Hmm. Do we want to just sack her? Yeah, probably, actually. We have I haven't lost yet, too. What exactly is teamwork? I am actually alright with sacking her here. Unleash! They'll heal a little, but they're pretty much dead here, especially if we draw on the gamblers. Oh no, we, we took one damage. Burst will kill, that's fine, or they can normal attack. We have free swap, so we can easily just go there if they want to use the burst. He's dead to anything, so. Uh, 
if they don't use the burst, we could Shenha, but do I really want to keep that? I don't know. We've got enough to do kind of anything, and with all of the cards in our hand, I think we're fine. I will have order. They are going for the burst. Okay. Uh, my curse. Uh, how do we want to do it? We can hee hee kill if we really want to, or we can use him. Are you sure it has to be me? <sighs> Fine. Let's get this. So over that's with. only going to do three. Unfortunate there. Um, if we do this though, that's 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 pretty much yeah, it's the end. Um, okay. Behold. I'm feeling a little off. And now, yeah, it doesn't really matter at this point. We can just insta. So yeah, the fresh wind of freedom, very broken card. Could it break? In the, these the kind of decks, it's insane. The like many of its variants, the deck's competitive rating is obviously S tier, but its competitive value really isn't the purpose of this video. The real purpose is to discuss the underlying issues surrounding this deck, decks like it, and certain specific cards in the deck. The first points to discuss are the character card's broken mechanics. Before addressing the obvious Shenha hat guy combo, Nahida's Seeds of Skanda have, and still do, need to be discussed. The Seeds of Skanda fall into the category of intangible persistent effects. These are adverse effects that, when applied, cannot be interacted with by the defending player, nor do they disappear over time. They exist until they are triggered and removed only from being activated. Once Seeds of Skanda are applied, the defending side can do nothing to cleanse them. They are only removed via activation. Without a round timer or a means of removal, the defending side is forced to suffer the effect without any recourse. Sure, they could swap to avoid elemental reactions, but reactions will eventually happen. Now, this alone isn't entirely an issue. After all, intangible persistent effects have existed in the game since the introduction of Klee and the effect of her burst, Sparks and Splash. Even the action card Fatui Conspiracy produces an intangible persistent effect, but no one would seriously argue that it's broken. So what's the issue with Nahida? The difference between these examples and characters like Nahida or even Lisa is the investment. Klee requires a 3-3 burst to produce this effect, and Fatui Conspiracy requires a specific deck setup and takes up space in the deck, not to mention the issue of drawing it first. But characters like Nahida and Lisa only require the use of a specific and easily repeatable skill to produce their effects. It's a low investment for a high value effect. This may be a small issue now, but continual additions of similarly intangible persistent effects could eventually spiral out of control. Of course, the more obvious and immediate point of concern is the Shenha hat guy combination. Now, Shenha swirl decks have existed for a while, and while strong, they've never been outright broken. However, hat guy's mechanic of directly attacking standby characters changes this. Admittedly, this mechanic is quite novel, but its ability to consistently swirl elements regardless of how the defending side tries to react leads directly into a bigger issue, the amount and type of damage it does. Because each attack can swirl, Hatguy has access to consistent AoE damage. On the surface, this is perfectly fine. However, the damage that can suddenly be unleashed on single target characters is also high. Factor in Hatguy's burst, and all of a sudden, his DPS is sky high for both AoE and single target attacks. No one character should so easily be able to do so much damage in both AoE and single target damage types. Sure, characters who can do strong single target and AoE damage have existed from the start. The Kitsing is a perfect example of this. With reactions like Electro Charge and Superconduct, Kitsing's burst can do 4 AoE damage to standby characters, potentially 
potentially five if Nahida's Seeds of Skandar are active, but the Dea match in this video proves an important difference. Investment. The investment needed for Kutzing or any other character to deal a sudden five plus damage to an opposing standby character far exceeds what it took for Hakai to deal a targeted six damage plus swirl AoE on the opponent's standby character. So, why is that important? Why is it broken? Again, the Dea match offers insight. By killing off the standby character, Fresh Winds of Freedom could trigger without the opponent being able to react at all. Were the active character killed, even with Fresh Winds of Freedom in play, the opponent could have reacted by choosing the next active character. While they would have likely still lost in this scenario, they would have had the agency to potentially change the outcome. But again, this is nothing new. Killing standby characters has been around since the beginning, so what's the issue? As mentioned earlier, it's the damage. No other character can do such significant damage for so little investment to a standby character to trigger such a devastating and irrevocable combo. This, like the issue of intangible persistent effects, takes agency from the defending side, preventing them from making a strategic comeback. And that is the biggest issue with it. But of course, it isn't just the character cards that can pull this off. Naturally, without the new arcane card, Fresh Winds of Freedom, this wouldn't be possible. And this card is the honorary mention of broken mechanics. But how is this card broken when the original Winds of Freedom Mondstadt Resonance card wasn't? The answer is threefold. Firstly, it no longer requires Mondstadt Resonance to play, thus freeing up what teams it can be used with. Secondly, because it's an arcane card, it no longer needs to be drawn, it's innately in the starting hand. And lastly, it no longer costs anything to cast. This card removes all of the limiting and balancing factors of the original Winds of Freedom version. Being restricted to only one copy is hardly a limiting factor, since only one copy of the original was usually ever needed to win a match. So what does all of this combined mean for this deck? It means that the deck can play two styles of total polar opposite speeds. The deck can either be a fast aggro deck, aiming to win in roughly three rounds, or it can play into a reverse sweep win condition. This is a problem because reverse sweep decks are typically made to be potential answers to decks with aggressive starts, not supplement aggro deck win conditions. On a grander scale, this pushes the overall style of the game even further towards aggro deck dominance, potentially nudging out other archetypes and styles. And of course, character combos like Shenna Hat Guy can render other character cards, like Ganyu, completely obsolete. So, as a player facing against Shenha Hat Guy decks, what strategies can be used? The first thing to understand is that these decks have specific windows for when they can dish out their damage, usually starting at the end of round two. Versions without Nahida or similar means of damage buffing will frequently opt for a fast Shenha burst, so Send Off can help negate this. Without energy cards, this will happen on round two, so interrupting the setup by either killing the Shenha, if your deck is fast enough, or with reactions like Freeze and Overload, can slow their deck down significantly. If the opponent does set up their combo for Hat Guy and there's no way for your deck to interrupt it, then a possible option is to treat the opponent's deck like an OTK deck, looking to mitigate damage for the duration of Shenha and Hat Guy's skill buffs before making your counterattack during the short window of opportunity where the opponent resets. This, of course, assumes that you can't simply kill the opposing Hat Guy to stop the onslaught. It is also best to assume that the opponent always has Fresh Winds of Freedom on hand, unless they show evidence otherwise, such as playing equipment variations of the deck that may prefer the Ancient Courtyard Arcane card. The best deck matchups against Shenna Hat Guy decks are likely going to be disrupting decks, utilizing Overload or Freeze, like Hat Guy Freeze Swirl with Mona and Eula, or equally as quick aggro decks like mirror matches against other Shenha Hat Guy variants. Just be sure to include easily accessible and cheap healing cards to help mitigate the damage and stay out of lethal range, especially if no arcane card has been exposed yet. Now, before ending off, I want to address a couple of final points. The first is that a deck does not need to be unbeatable to be broken or to use broken mechanics. 
After all, any deck can lose due to poor plays or bad luck. Similarly, a deck can have counters, yet still utilize broken mechanics as well. The second point is answering whether or not this is just a simple change of the meta. The answer is that this is a forced change of the meta. Hoyoverse's release of these cards is a conscious decision, and they are likely well aware of how these cards can directly counter the previous meta. The issue of this is that meta should develop organically via the community. When forced, it is because objectively stronger or overpowered cards or mechanics are introduced, rendering previous ones obsolete. And while other TCGs do this or adjust card rotations, that doesn't justify the act in and of itself. It's a potentially slippery slope to go down for Genshin's TCG, and something the player base should remain acutely aware of. Regardless though of if you agree or disagree, thank you for watching, and for more Genshin TCG content, click on the video here, and see you next time.